We're just waiting for people to get in. Just myself. That's too <laughs> Hi, Candace. Hey, Candace. One Gina. Hello. Hello. Shine kind. Oh, Welcome. Oh, Heidi DeVry. Hey. Hey, Heidi. We're just wa waiting for a few more people to log on. Yep. Lucas James. Tara. What's up, Tara? <laughs> What's up? Ebony O'Brien. I am Rob. All oh, right. There's my mom. Hey. All right. We're all there. Hey, gang. Hi. All right. Let's get started. Right, let's go. Um, thank everybody for coming and joining us virtually. Uh, my name is Walter Carter, uh, Director of Hospitality for Daza del Sol uh, Winery as well as Museo de la Vina. Uh, to my right or to your left uh, is Michelle, uh, Nicole Gallagher. She is the um, wine club event uh, slash uh, shipping slash maintenance slash uh, whatever construction worker. Right? <laughs> uh, she does a little bit of everything here, uh, so she decided to help me out. And then behind the camera, we have our taste room manager, uh, Tiffany Hello. Uh, Smith, is here as well. So thank you guys for our first uh, virtual Messina de la Vina uh, tasting. Uh, it was a crazy time, so we we were uh, digging into our bag of tricks, and I had a chance to do this one last Saturday for uh, for Donza, and it wound up being a really fun experience. So I hope you guys are enjoying yourself. Uh, sit back, relax, uh, keep your hands clean, your glasses full, and, and let's enjoy the ride. Okay, we're gonna taste wines, and I hope you guys, if you have questions, uh, just uh, write them or type them in below, and we'll get uh, we'll get back to you. Hopefully, you can hear us. Hopefully, you can see us. Uh, if you need us to do something different, let us know. Okay. All right. Let's get started. Hey. Okay. Um, we'll be reviewing these five wines, so hopefully you have some on deck, so you can go through this with us. I know some of you stopped in today to stock up. Thank you very much. Um, we'll be reviewing the Magrana, our pomegranate sparkling Chardonnay, 2017, and our first estate grown. We are super proud of this. We have our 2015 Movedra. For anyone who knows me. You know this is my my special one and our 2015 Malbec we'll get into the details of that one later and then the Verano all right so let's get started with our first one all right uh, this one if you know Messiah if you know it well if you've been here a time or two you know that this particular variety or uh, wine has its own following almost a cult following if you will uh, it's the Magrana uh, it's one of two sparkles that we serve here at uh, Messia. it's got a it's flavored with pomegranate, and I really honestly think it's one of the most balanced sparklings that we have here in the valley. All right. It is 11% alcohol, so super drinkable. Um, the cool thing about it, it's good any time of the year. It goes over well on a hot day, it goes over well when you're sitting on the couch, just hanging out with friends and fam. Ooh, that looks good. Now, we're trying to practice our social distancing here, people, so <laughs> bear with us, okay, as I pour and get in and get out of the frame. I'm trying to stay on the edge as far back as I can. <laughs> okay. Uh, so if you've had this Magrana, you know that the flavor, the smell, it reminds me of a very light watermelon or strawberry or Jolly Rancher right off the nose. And I think it's just a great way to get the party started. I get a little bit of a sweet tart on there too. Absolutely. Um, Nicole, what would you pair this with? So actually this one is very interesting. The pairings that I came up with, and I don't know about you guys, but with my kid being home from school, I have made so much peanut butter and jelly sandwiches this week. It's ridiculous. He's asking for one, feels like every 10 minutes. So I've just been eating peanut butter and jelly crust with the leftover chips. You would not believe how well this pairs with salted potato chips, peanut butter and jelly. And if you're like me, you can throw the chip in the sandwich. Ooh, it's amazing. Nice. Yeah, thank you. A, a little, little crunch on yeah. the yeah, 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 yeah. sandwich. Because uh, sometimes you don't want to get the peanut butter with the nuts actually in it. So the yeah, crunch, yeah. No. So yeah, that add, adds to it. Um, really salted peanuts. Um, and if you happen to have any white chocolate laying around, that's a Ooh. really good pairing with this as well. I can totally see white chocolate with that. And that's the Magrana. I think a lot of times when people are looking for certain sparklings, whether it be Prosecco or whether it be a dry, really dry fruit, I think sometimes they're looking to go one way or the other. This one kind of sits in the middle and it really does 
uh, set your palate up for success for whatever you're going to do after. So I like kind of starting the tasting uh, with this Magrana, or you could finish the tasting uh, with the Magrana. And it's great, great for uh, brunch. If you're a brunch fan, probably now, in the last couple of days, you've probably been doing a lot of brunching <laughs> at home. Um, this works. This works. Good anytime wine. This is definitely a fun time wine. Um, if you need a pep up any day or experience, um, Ooh, that's good. you want to pick up this. That's good. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we've got a bunch of Magrana fans out there. Hopefully, you're, you're at home drinking this with us right now. We appreciate Send it. Send a thumbs up if you're a Magrana fan. You right. want to see that. Magrana or Brut, they're both really good. And we'll, the next time, we'll probably add the Brut, but we wanted to, we had to do the PB&J. I'm sorry, the Magrana today <laughs> with the PB&J. I just saw I PB think you're hungry. <laughs> <laughs> a hi to Have Nicole from Pop the, Ch the Champs. Hi, Jenna. Hey. Um, all right, any questions about the Magrana? Like it? We got here. Tim says it's a nice. perfect summer drink. Woo! Nice. A lot of oh, likes. Hey. Hi, sister. Hi. <laughs> Thumbs up. She's a Magrata. Uh, Patricia's a Magrata fan. Thumbs up. All right. Let's uh, move on to wine number two. All right. So moving on to our 2015 Chardonnay. Um, a state grown. For any of you that have visited our winery, these are the vines located at the bottom of the hill, leading about halfway up the driveway. Um, so you pass them on your way here. This is those grapes in this bottle. Thank you. Uh, the 2017 Chardonnay, for anybody that watched the um, the live that we did last Saturday for Donza, a couple people asked about Donza having a Chardonnay. Uh, we currently don't have one on our menu, but I tell people all the time that if you want a really good Chardonnay, this is the place to get it. And I'm not a huge Chardonnay drinker. Uh, there's something about this one that I really, really love. I will say, um, going into the tasting, the Walter Pour. The Walter Poor. <laughs> I'm, I'm working on the shirts. I'm getting the shirts made. Just sit tight. I'm he working on the shirts. He needs to trademark that. <laughs> okay, so the 17 Chardonnay. Right, cheers. 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 Right away, um, mm. that nose. That is toasty. Very toasty. Toasty butterscotch. You definitely get that oak influence. Um, but it's not overpowering, actually. Not at all. Not at all. We got a cheers from Megan Jackson and Lucas James. This Chardonnay is fire. Yay! <laughs> we agree. We agree. <laughs> so I don't naturally gravitate towards Chardonnays. Um, so when I decided to do the pairing for this, I didn't know what to expect. I have to admit, this was the most fun for me because it went with so much different items that I had in my kitchen that I didn't even expect it to pair with everything that I had. I ended up really loving this Chardonnay. Um, so I'm saying that as a typical non-Chardonnay fan, um, it went with popcorn, <laughs> it went with seafood, crab cakes. Um, I even made garlic chicken and mashed potatoes last night. I could have drank just poured the wine into the chicken. It was fantastic. So play around with this one a little bit. You're basically just playing off the sugars and the acids. This one's so mild and easy to drink. It You won't go wrong with much on this one. I was thinking uh, when you said the, you said crab cakes or, or, or mm -hmm. seafood. I like the idea of crab cake, maybe with some sort of like a, Horse radish or, or mm. uh, mustardy, stone ground mustardy kind of a mayo. Yes. I can see that being really good. Maybe just some tater tots with that kind of dip, maybe. Uh, listen, we're listen, we're in the middle of a situation, so you know, the food, you gotta take what you can get. And sometimes you're just pairing it with nothing, right? A chair, uh, <laughs> and whoever's whoever's hunkering down with you during quarantine. So um, you guys enjoy this however you want, uh, but the pairings I think are, are when, when Nicole and I were talking about it, we try to keep them simple, right? We try to go things that you can just find around the house. So I think, uh, like I said, that crab cake sounds ideal with this, and some sort of dip would be phenomenal. Now we do have a few people that just chimed in, and okay. KMT1808 wanted to know which Chardonnay is this? She just logged in, or he or she just logged in. Uh, it's a 2017 estate grown uh, Chardonnay, Temecula Valley ABA. This is the one currently on our menu as of right now. Um, and actually, do you want to go over the... Yeah, we 
we that? Should. We should. Um, We're going to teach you how to smell and taste like a pro real quick. All right. So uh, we always talk about the five S's of wine tasting. I think it's something that a lot of people should know. Um, your first S is going to be sight. You want to hold the glass by the stem. Uh, you, and you're, what you're looking for is color and clarity. Okay. A lot of times when you're looking, especially a white wine, you can tell a lot about the age by the color of the wine. The more deep, dark, brooding, golden yellow it is, typically the little older it is. Now this is going to be a little bit darker because it's got some a, uh, oak influence, but if it was a Char uh, Sauvignon Blanc or Pinot Grigio and it was a little bit older, say it was a 2015 or 16, it's definitely going to have a darker hue to it because it's got a little bit of age. And that's what you're looking for when you're using your sight to look at a wine. All right. Your second S, as you've probably seen us doing it up here, is to swirl. Uh, there's two reasons that you swirl the wine. Number one, because it is cool and it's fun to do, right? I can do this all day. I look like a pro, right? Look. Um, but the real reason we swirl the wine is to volatilize the ester. It's just a fancy way of saying you're letting that wine breathe. You'd be amazed to see what it's like when you open a bottle, pour it into a glass, and drink it right away, versus giving it some time to really air out, really breathe, let it, let it open up. That wine really wants to breathe and open up, and when you let it do that, when you swirl it, you're allowing it to do so, all right? So that's your second S. Your third S is my favorite S, is to smell. Now, it's your glass, it's your nose. Get your nose down in there. Get your sniffer down in there, all right? The closer you get to that wine, the more you're able to kind of pick up those subtle notes. And we had a little, um, we, we give people a little hint or a little cheat. If you in your mind, if you break that glass in half, cut it in half, the top of the glass is going to give you the aromas. The bottom of the glass is going to give you the bouquet. The bouquet talks about the oak influence. The aromas are more about the fruit and the grapes themselves. So when you say you smell things like um, baking spices or, or vanilla, those are for the, about the bouquet. That's going to be at the bottom, your heavier notes. When you say you smell orange blossom or citrus, or just the grape themselves, that's gonna be your aroma. Those are gonna be a little bit lighter. Those are gonna be at the top of the glass, okay? So we've seen it, we've swirled it, we've smelled it. Your fourth S is to sip. sip. Now when you're sipping a wine, you don't wanna take wine shots, right? You just wanna sip it, allow that wine to fall all over your palate and um, let it slowly kind of fall down your throat. And that leads us to our fifth S, which is to savor. And savoring, that's when we start, talk, start talking about the pairings of a wine. Um, as soon as you sip it, you want to savor it, and then you should immediately start thinking about what can we eat with this. That's the first thing I think about. What can we eat with this wine? Or when I eat food, or what can we drink with this food? So those are your five S's. Use them. Uh, there's going to be a test on it later, so I hope you wrote them down. <laughs> hope you remember. All right. And if you are doing some pairings at home with your wine, um, the rec well, what I recommend is sipping your wine, trying a bite of your food, and sipping again. Um, that'll get the taste of the wine, then how it is with the food um, afterwards. We call that uh, SBS, not BS, SBS, sip, bite, sip. <laughs> and the alcohol in the Chardonnay is 14.2. Um, I would say that's medium range for alcohol. Um, most of some white wines, but some white wines can be a little bit higher or lower in alcohol. Here in Temecula Valley, with the weather being getting as warm as it does, it does allow us to take some of those white wines up a little bit higher in alcohol. All right, so 14.2, that's pretty That's pretty good for Chardonnay. It's not a bad thing. Not a bad thing. <laughs> hey, right. Raul. Hey, Lisa. Hey, we got everybody. Welcome. Alejandro, Taylor, and Andrew. Jamaican bombshell. Hello. KMT 1808. I had a Chardonnay in February when I was there, and it was really good. Is this the same one? Mm -hmm. This February, if it was this February, it would be the same exact one. Our 2017 Chardonnay. Yum. Hope you're enjoying it. Hope you got more bottles to keep having more. Yes. All right. Well, I'm uh, ready for the next one. Right, let's go to wine number three. My favorite. 3TIG just joined, or 3TG, oh, JG. Hey, Trav. Hey, Trav. <laughs> Trav. What's up, Trav? What's up, baby? <laughs> Sorry, I, I butchered that for you, Travis. Thank you. Pilot79 yes. just joined us. Welcome. <laughs> it's not done yet. 
Mine doesn't have to be super elaborate. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> so Walter is pouring up for 2015 Movedra. Its Spanish name is also called it's Monstrelle. 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 Yeah. I always say that wrong. Um, so it's definitely a popular variety in widely planted in Europe. Um, it's my favorite out here in the Temecula Valley. If you have a Monastrell Mobedra, I am trying it. This one for me always starts off at first sip, very tart cherry. Mm. Yeah, that Then it just opens up and mellows out so beautifully. To me, it, I can put this down a whole bottle without even realizing I did it. It is just so smooth. And I think I kind of got Walter on the Mobedra train. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> You definitely get a little blackberry, a little hint of cocoa powder on there. Um, this is just amazing. I pair this one. It has a couple different options. So pot roast is actually a really good pairing with this. Um, any sort of braised or stewed meats, this is going to complement extremely well. And then randomly, if you're not into meats, um, Blue cheese salads are actually fantastic. The funkiness of the blue cheese is going to complement this, the acidity and the sugar, phenomenally. Absolutely. So try it with that. Even if, I know a lot of people don't like blue cheese, but if you do, have a crumble, have some Movedra. It's amazing. So we had a question sure. um, about our Chardonnay. It says estate bottled. Does that mean it was bottled on the estate as well or just the grapes from the property? Um. I'm going to go with uh, the grapes are from the property. So anytime you see a state bottled, and it was bottled on the estate, uh, but the grapes are from the property and it was bottled here on the estate. Um, We're smaller production, um, but our sister winery, Donza, we have share a winemaking team. So they are really good about coming over here and doing as much work as they can on our small facility. Anything else that they can't accomplish here, they just move over to Donza and finish up over there. So it is a state. Yeah. Uh, back to the Mouvet. Um, the alcohol on this one is 14.6. Uh, that's important for a couple of reasons. When you taste this wine, I don't think had I told you it was 14.6 that you would know that. It doesn't drink with a lot of alcohol. It doesn't drink very big. This is a very lighter bodied, uh, smoother tannin wine. If you're a fan of GSM, this is actually the blend in a GSM, the Grenache Syrah Mouvet. Um, the Mouvet in it, um, it's, just a, it's just a nice grape. I think it does really well here in Temecula Valley. We're seeing more and more wineries uh, ex watch these grapes express and bring them to the forefront. And they're really doing a really good job with them. And this one is a great example. 2015 um, Temecula Valley uh, Mouvet. I think it's really, really nice. And I think the great idea, the blue cheese, I think would really set off the fruit in this one. Um, Nicole actually and I did we did an offsite event uh, a few weeks ago at a court fire. Well, that seems like forever ago. It does. Damn, was that only a couple of weeks ago? Yeah. Um, and we we actually poured the Mouvet and the orchestra side by side, and we had more people come up and go, "Hey, can, how do we get that Mouvet? Or can I have some more of that?" It just went over really really well. So if you're if you're a fan of a little bit lighter body wine, not light, I'd say light to medium body. If you're a fan of that style of wine, I think the Mouvet is a great one uh, to give a try. Um, anything to add? What else did you say? Blue cheese or what else did you say? Oh, stewed meats. Hot meat. roast, stewed meats. Um, trying to think this is like your crock pot night wine, mm. definitely. Maybe even pour a little bit in there if you don't mind wasting okay. it. Just put a little, you know, maybe half a cup uh, into whatever you're cooking in the crock pot. Let that, let those juices come together with that wine. It should make for a nice, that a nice pairing. Really good. Right? Yes. Uh, any questions out there so far? Anybody? So we had a question from our Temecula Valley. Um, I don't know a lot about wine, but how long does it take for the grapes to ferment to make a bottle of wine? Oh, wow. Good question. Okay. Really good question. Um, so the process, the whole process can take uh, any... Okay, okay, let's back up. Okay, let's back up. So we're going to harvest every year around the same time, somewhere between August, September, October, somewhere in that window, they're going to harvest the grapes. They're going to ferment the grapes anywhere from a week to three weeks depending on what's going on and how uh, thick the skins are, how deep and dark they want it to be. At some point after that two to three week period, they're gonna put it into a barrel. Typically for our red wine program, we go anywhere from six to 18 months 
is kind of the time frame that it'll spend in an actual barrel. Once it's out of that barrel, we're gonna bottle it. It's gonna go from a barrel into the bottle. And once it's in the bottle, it usually takes anywhere from six to nine or six to 12 months to, to settle. After it goes through bottle shock, it's gonna settle inside the bottle. So that's why when you, and Messia and Gonza, they both do a really good job of kind of, we almost do the hard work for you. We sell the wine for you. So that's why we're talking about a 2015. All the hard work has been done. It's been cellared, uh, it's settled, it's gone through bottle shock. We've tasted and retasted it. Once we feel like it's ready to kind of hit the ground running, then we release it and let it go. So I don't know if I answered your question. Did I answer the question? I think so. um, it takes a while. It takes, there, it takes a while. It <laughs> a takes lot of time. work goes into this. Yeah. But when you get here and get to the wines, it's ready to be drank immediately. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Uh, by the time you get here, it's ready to go. <laughs> we got a Humboldt Fog for sure. Oh, yes. Humboldt Fog is kind of similar to Blue Cheese in its funkiness. Um, so yes. I would say that would go actually really well with this Mo yeah, as well. Somebody Play come, around with Somebody it. come drop off Humboldt Fog yes. um, if you have any. Just drop it at so the front door. Good. I we'll haven't get found it. any in a long time. Man, that's good stuff. Um, Thank you for joining us, some of you new people. We have Emily Ann. Hi, Emily. Nixter 119. Oh, that's my sister. Nicole Hi. Alexandria Walter. She said, Hey, Walter. Hey, how you doing? Rare Breed, thank you for joining us. Sandy. Hey. Hi, Hi guys. guys. <laughs> and then Art Temecula Valley said, Thank you. My name is Sheila York, and I operate Art Temecula Valley Publication, and I'm new to social media, and I'm loving it. Yes, you answered hey, perfectly. Thanks awesome. for coming. Thank you. Right, thanks for keep being the questions here. coming. Yeah, come on, keep it's it coming. It's fun to answer them. All right, uh, wine number one, two, three. Wine hey, Mary. Four. Hi, Hi Mary. Mary. What you drinking? Uh, she tried drinking Magrano. <laughs> Pinot Gris. Pinot Gris, yeah, maybe Pinot. <laughs> <laughs> My bad, Mary. We didn't even put your business. We didn't even put your business out there. Hi, Betsy. Hi, Hi Betsy. Betsy. <laughs> All right. All right. Wine number one, two, four. Four. All right. Wonderful. You want to introduce yourself? Yeah. All right, guys. So this is a little bit newer to our menu. This is our 2016 Malbec. Um, Malbec is one of our other estate grapes that we grow on property. Um, so we grow the three varietals, the Chardonnay, the Malbec, and then the Syrah. So this is kind of fun to have these on the menu, knowing that they come from around here. This one was extremely different than the previous vintage we had. It came out, and I'm going to do the, the thing, the swirl and the smell. The thing. The thing. <laughs> it came out super fruity this year, and I'm loving it because I am a fruit-forward wine drinker. It's just blueberry, blackberry to me really getting that on this. Definitely has a little bit of earthy undertones on there, but primarily it's very pretty. I think, um, if I remember right, a couple of, somebody that worked at Donza recently took a trip, kind of recently, took a trip to uh, Chile. And I think the thing I asked them to bring it back was a, was a Malbec. I think I really, I think they're kind of known for Malbecs, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I've had some Chilean Malbecs, and I've had some other Malbecs uh, around the, the area. What I like about this one, what sets this one apart, is it is fruit forward. And about mid palate, the tannins kind of ramp up a bit and it kind of lasts all the way through the finish of the tasting. I just love the way this wine drinks. Um, I'm a fan of fruit forward wine too, but I don't mind a little bite. Uh, my mom's kind of the same way. She likes her coffee black, right? She likes her wine rough. Um, and a lot of people like that. But the cool thing about this Malbec is that it starts out kind of light fruit forward and then kind of mid, like I said, mid palate kind of late palette, it just really ramps up. Those tannins really come alive. And you can see how pairing this with, um, we were talking about a couple of different things. I think my pairing is what you see. Oh, this was my grill night. Yes. Oh my gosh, so yes. your steaks, your burgers, your barbecue, I mean, even barbecue sauce. Tiffany said she had it yesterday with some barbecue chips and it was phenomenal. Um, this is your go outside, get the kids out, let them run out that energy, fire up the grill, and Absolutely. Wow, a 2013 Garnacha. That's delicious. Hey. So T Golf says, Hi, my wife and I don't have the Malbec, but are tasting the 2013 Garnacha, and it's amazing. Mm. Honestly, I have to agree. The 13 was amazing. There's some good years out here for Tonight Villa. Uh, 
Um, I like the steaks idea. Actually, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of gorgonzola cheese. We talked about blue cheese earlier. Mm -hmm. I love making a little gorgonzola crust on the steak. Uh, get a little bit of bread and a little bit of cheese, kind of press that together, uh, put it in the freezer, let, let it get hard. Just as you're getting ready to finish those steaks, drop that on there, put it in the, in the broiler, let it go for like two or three minutes and let that crust and that cheese kind of melt over the top. That with this wine, forget about it. This is the idea. I'm about to go do that right now. I'll see y'all later out. Um, I'm really excited about this um, Malbec too because it actually won a double gold in uh, the uh, Toast of the Coast. Uh, it's a wine competition down in uh, Del Mar. Uh, and so we entered this wine and it actually won double gold. So if you don't have a bottle of the 2016 Malbec, go get it. Um, and the cool thing is, is the alcohol in this one is actually a little bit lower, it's 13.7. So whereas the Vegetable is 14.6, the Malbec is 13.7, a little bit lower, but it drinks bigger. So you don't, you don't always need that alcohol to really overpower or give a wine some weight. Sometimes it's about structure, it's about tannin, it's about how that wine is developed. This wine is developed beautifully. And for 2016, we got a little time for it to keep getting better. And then it's just gonna keep getting better. So come in or pick up the phone or go online and, and order some. Uh, get, your, get your couple bottles of this because it's gonna be good. It's really good. It's really, really good. I like this one. Yeah, this is, this is, this might be my favorite. I know, I know Lucas will say the 15, if Lucas is still he's, watching. He's me. actually on there. Yeah, he Lucas. said he's about ready to fire up some steaks after watching yeah, this. Yeah, Lucas, <laughs> Lucas, Lucas is the server that works here at Messia. He was a huge fan of the 2015 Malbec. Um, and I was telling him, I think the 16 is better. He's like, you're one of the only ones. I really like the 16, Lucas. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a fan of the 16. I think people are switching over to the 16. Yeah, yeah, that's what happens. The further you get away from that old wine and into a new one, you start to really love that one, right? Sorry, Rachel Reyes. We know you're drinking the 15 now, but you got to try the 16. Good. It's you still gotta good. Come get the 16. Come on, come get the 16. All it's right. good. Hey, Batch Mead. Hi, Pretty Paints. Hi, Pretty Paints. Hi, Crystal. Hi, Suzanne. Everybody's in here. Thank yeah, you guys for coming Thank by. Thank you so much. Thank you for your support of us. Brooke, hey. Be Hi, Brooke. Yes, be be, West? it's B-West. B-West is in the house. How's How Hawaii? <laughs> How cool is that? You see, we How? miss you all. We want to know what's going on in your lives. We want to know everything. Yeah, what you're eating. <laughs> how's Hawaii? <laughs> I think this is more therapeutic for us. I know, than right? You guys I'm like communicating me. with adults. <laughs> <laughs> in the real world. Thank you, guys. Um, any more questions out there? Everybody good? Oh, we stand corrected. Actually, Rach, uh, Rach Reyes is actually drinking that 16. It was a typo. Yay! Yay. Yes. Enjoy. Salute. Enjoy. Uh, hopefully, you guys are having a good time. We wanted to give a special thanks to all the people out there still working, uh, the healthcare providers, all those people uh, still on the front lines of this thing. We really appreciate you guys, and hopefully, you're able to get some downtime and enjoy some wine at some point soon. Email or call us at any time. Um, I will get back to you as soon as I can um, to get your wine out there to you. I know it's one of the things that has been getting us through all these odd times, um, but we can all drink together still, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> and then... Um, if you guys are enjoying this, uh, we were kind of talking about it together. We think we're gonna do it again. Um, we're looking at Friday. Uh, April 3rd it's gonna be our virtual Friday that's what we're gonna call it virtual Friday uh, we'll get out the menu or whatever we're gonna do we'll get that out to you on social media and let you guys know what to be ready to open or pop open with us um, so we're gonna call it virtual Friday uh, it's gonna be at 5 o'clock uh, it's gonna be right here on um, Lucia de la Vina IG TV um, hopefully you guys can come join us and uh, take a load off and take give a minute to uh, get your mind off what's going on out there yes. join us, okay? We have a quick question here from KMT 1808. So she says she's a member of Donza. Are there any discounts for us in buying your wine right now? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um. mm -hmm. <laughs> there are. Uh, Patricia, if you're still watching, uh, um, actually, I do think we should we should extend some sort of. Uh, so typically, the discount is normally 10% off any bottles that you purchase. Um, but I think in light of things, we could probably bump that number up just. A yeah. scotch. Let us uh, let us let us talk to my pe uh, our people, and uh, we'll we'll put that out on um, on uh, social media as soon as this is over. We'll figure out some sort of discount for Messiah members to buy Donza wine and Donza Messiah 
to Don's a member of Survive and Masia One. Yes, uh, we we're all in the same family. Absolutely. Looks like Absolutely. Nixter is saying she doesn't have any Masia wines. What should she order? <clears throat> oh. I'm gonna see what happened was. On the spot. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I definitely think you would like the Malbec, you would like the Magrana, you would like the Brew. I, oh, I, here we go, Patricia. 25% off, six or more. Okay. All right. So if you're a Donza member and you want to buy Masia wine, you get 25% off. Because typically the, the, the discount 10. is 10. Mm -hmm. So we're adding 15% off on that. So you guys hear that? 25% off, six bottles or more if you're a Donza member wanting to purchase Messia de la Vina wine. At any time, you can email wineclub at messiadelavinia.com. You can send me your order. I will input it for you. Um, I am usually, One of us is always in the office daily Somebody. from 10 to 5 p.m. So you can let us know at any time. And then we're open from 1 to 5 for pickups and purchases. So we may try to make it as extremely easy as on everyone as we can all right so wine number <clears throat> five okay and we went with the dessert one on this one uh, messiah has got two dessert wines that we're uh, really proud of i think the cool thing about these two is that everybody that comes usually goes to a wine event but you guys have a port uh, do you have a sherry and it's cool to be able to send people or have them come here and enjoy both of those styles of wine and today we picked the verano this is more typically what you consider a sherry style. I would say it's pretty sweet, um, but it does, I'm a huge believer in a time and a place for everything. I definitely found a time and a place for this one. Okay. Uh, the alcohol on this one's gonna be 18%. Did you guys hear me? I said 18, 18%. Uh, so this will definitely get the, uh, this will put a nice, nice nightcap to your evening. Can you guys see the color on that? You see that? So this is definitely gonna be a little bit uh, more viscous, a little bit heavier. It's definitely gonna have that port um, sherry style smell, smell to it. It is sweet. It has definitely got that sweetness to it, but it's, you, can, you can tell it's fortified. It's got some body, it's got some hook to it. Now Nicole, when she when she gave me this pairing, I was all over it. So let her let her give you the pairing. Okay, guys, you're actually not going to drink this wine. You're going to open it, take a sip, and then you're gonna pour it all over some vanilla ice cream, and then you're just gonna have at it. It is amazing. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, I'm a big fan of vanilla bean, kind of an original style, which I think goes really well with this. But let's be honest. Whatever ice cream you have in the fridge, just dump this on top. Mm. It's really good. Just and don't let the kids have any. Yeah, right. The kids can't have any. <laughs> and on those cold nights when it's a little bit colder um, and you need some kind of warm you up, this is the perfect kind of um, uh, Ooh, you vehicle to help you out do that. Some apple cider. Ooh. That would go really well in this, actually. Yes. Some warm apple cider. Is your throat tingling just a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> apple cider and some verano, you're good. <laughs> Maybe even uh, maybe cut up some apples and cook uh, cook this down. Mm -hmm. uh, put it over some apples. Put over some a quick high heat. Just let those apples kind of soak that up and put all of that over some ice cream. That could work too. Uh, turn into almost a bit of a caramel. Shine kind of saying it's a nice substitute for Marsala wine. Oh, Ooh. oh, I forgot about that. Yes. Oh my okay. God. Oh, I love you. That's why. Thank I you, love Jamie. You. Um, <laughs> we actually were trying to make a Marsala sauce at home the other night. That's why I text you. Oh. I you, yeah. We were okay. To, I was looking up the uh, I was looking up the recipe for a Marsala wine, and all we had was this, and uh, it worked beautifully. Interesting. Um, yeah, it worked. Really he did. Good. I got a text that said, "Is this more port or sherry?" <laughs> I was trying to make sure I had the right thing, and she was doubting me. Just for the record, now that I got, she doubted me that it wasn't gonna work, and it worked. It was good. It was good. So if you don't have Marsala wine on hand, and you have some Verano, you're you're fine. You're you're gonna be just fine. Um, any more questions? You guys got? Do you guys have any questions? Um, I do want to reiterate, we have special discount so if you guys are trying to buy some wine six or more bottles for anybody who's not a member is 25% off and that's with the code promo code sit from home if you're a member use the promo code sit from home club to receive 35% off Do you guys have any questions I see some coming in 
Well, actually, Lucas is giving us some more tips. So if you bake a nice chocolate cake, poke holes in it, and pour it all over, it's perfect as well. Nice. Oh, a little bundt cake. Okay, I can do that. Yeah. Um, yeah, and listen, if you guys want to come by and pick up bottles, uh, the taste room is open from 1 to 5 for you guys to stop by and pick up bottles. Or like we said, you guys can get them shipped out to you. Um, just go online or give us a call and we'll get those out to you ASAP. And right now, shipping is included until April 30th, so get those orders in if you want them yes. shipped out to you. I think it's so fun to just have your doorbell ring and then there's wine. I right, really just show up. Yeah, right. I could be in my sweat, my Tuesday sweats. Right. <laughs> my mom actually just, is that Ron? No. no. So Nickster wants to know how long does it take to ship to Florida, my neck of the woods. Uh, <laughs> I shipped some out on Friday and it just got there today. So what is that? How many days? I had to count. Count on your hands. Hand. Using your hands. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't do that. Why? I don't know. It's like five or six yeah, yeah, days. days. <laughs> uh, let's just give it about a week. I'd say up to a fair window right now. I'm sure they're probably inundated with a lot of wine, uh, a lot of shipping going on. So give it about a week. Um, I think uh, that would be fair to say about a week to get your wine out to you. And what's that member code again? Sip from Home Club is the member promo code. If you are not a member, it is Sip From Home, but if you would like to get that extra discount, you can go to our web store and sign up as a member. You can join the membership through the uh, through online or through the website. So we hope you guys do that if you're interested in those discounts. And like we said, we thank you so much uh, for being here, for being a part of this. Uh, like I said, I think this is more therapeutic for us. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, we're gonna do it again Friday, uh, April, Third yes. at five o'clock, virtual Friday. We'll be uh, right here at Masia de la Vina. You guys have anything else? No, I think that's it. Send some love, hit that like and heart button so we can see all of you guys. Make and sure you hit the like button with clean hands. <laughs> clean hands and full glasses. That's my that's my mom. I'm gonna spray him with Lysol after yeah, please, this. Yeah, so. <laughs> and don't forget to tell your family and friends to join in next yes. Friday. We would love next to see Friday. each so, and every single one of you. Yes, for those of you who are of you who are not members or do not know when we are open for regular business we are open on fridays for late night happy hours so this is our way of kind of saying hey you know we can't all hang out together on friday nights but you can virtually hang out and drink with us friday april 3rd at 5 p.m we look forward to seeing everybody back here uh like i said we'll put up the the wine that we're going to taste uh, that night so you guys can go ahead and get your orders in so you can drink along with us so we don't have to be the only ones drinking. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, things that you'd like to see or hear, uh, we're going to even try to get the winemaker to come out just tonight. Yes. We'll try to get him to come out and do some stuff with us as well. So if you have any suggestions, we're open. We're here for you. Uh, Masia de la Vina is here for you guys. Thank you guys so much uh, for staying with us, uh, for continuing to support us, whether it be in the tasting room, online um, we just really appreciate it thank you so much yeah and flawless yes you can still pick up your wine club shipping so our doors are open for you come say hey um, take a few extra bottles home but we are open from one to five daily so please stop in social distancing of course yes and we've disinfected everything yes yeah. twice <laughs> thank you guys for being here okay. cheers, cheers.